Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We are getting into some physics applications today of AB Calculus AB, and we're talking about straight line motion, so let's get to it. And so here we have a position function here. Uh, we have position with respect to time. And so on my x-axis, we have position. I'm going to put x, and my, my x-axis, I'm going to have time. So my y-axis is going to be position, and let's call it meters and time, let's call it in seconds, okay? So you can see how in this position time graph, we start off at time zero, we're at a position of positive four. So positive four units away. Now you can see what's happening to this, this object. It's starting at positive four meters away and it's going down to something like 2.8 meters eventually. So about 1.2 seconds or so. Um, we're down to this position of positive 2.8. So what's what's actually happening to this object? This object is moving backwards, isn't it? This object is moving backwards. Then it stops because anytime you're moving backwards and you want to change direction, you have to stop. And it is now moving forwards, and its position is getting greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. And greater. And you can see that is this position time function. Now, you can see the velocity with respect to time is the change of your position with respect to time. Or you could say your derivative of your position graph. And so let's take the derivative of this function. So we're going to use the power rule here. We have 3t squared minus 4t and that is my new function. Mm -hmm. And so remember, the velocity at every single point in time is going to be the, uh, at every instantaneous point in time, is going to be the slope of the tangent. And so you can see how the velocity ends up getting negative, 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 and then becomes zero, which means the velocity is zero right here. It's not moving. And then the velocity becomes positive, doesn't it? Okay, becomes positive. And so it's moving in the positive direction. And so we can graph that out. Take a look at this graph. You can see how the 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 orange is the velocity with respect to time. Okay, and you can see my velocity starts at zero because my slope of my tangent is about zero here. Okay, and then you can see the velocity ends up being negative. Now, what does negative mean? It doesn't mean it's moving slow. It means it's moving backwards. And you can see then the velocity becomes a the or becomes the most negative, the steepest slope, the fastest it's going right here. And then you can see then it starts to slow down. And now right here in my velocity graph, you can see my velocity is equal to zero right here. What does that mean? The slope of the position time graph is zero, which means it has stopped. And now it's speeding up in the positive direction. And so it has changed directions. So when your velocity time graph goes from negative to positive, that means you're changing direction. You're changing direction. So you can see in the velocity time graph, when your velocity is equal to negative, that means it is moving backwards. Okay, and then when your velocity is positive, that means it's moving forwards. Okay, whether it's speeding up or slowing down, the, remember speed is a scalar quantity, velocity is a vector quantity. So velocity has direction involved. Speed means you can see from zero meters per second, remember we're dealing with velocity here, we're speeding up. Then right here, we start to slow down. Okay, then we start to speed up again after it. Okay, now remember, you can find out the acceleration. We knew uh, velocity with respect to time is the, the derivative of the position with respect to time, or x prime t. Well, the acceleration with respect to time is the change of the velocity with respect to time, or v prime t. Or you could say the second derivative, the second derivative uh, d squared x over dt squared, the second derivative of the position with respect to time. So let's take this velocity time graph or function and let us find the acceleration. So we got the power rule, we got 6t minus 4, and so you can see how the acceleration is a linear function here. Okay, I hope you can see the x, the, the position function is a cubic function. 
the velocity function is a quadratic function, a squared function. The acceleration is a linear function. Okay, and so you can see how the slopes of this orange graph tells you the acceleration. So you can see the acceleration is negative, the acceleration is zero, the acceleration is positive, the acceleration is positive. Okay, and so you can see when I graph that out, here are your three graphs. And how can you interpret these graphs? Well, I like to always look at where the slopes of the tangents are equal to zero. You can see we have a zero and a zero. That means the orange graph is at zero and zero. And then we have a zero on this graph, which gives you corresponds with that zero right there. Okay, on my acceleration. Uh, if we take a look at, at this graph, the big thing we want to do anytime we see a graph is we want to see what type of graph it is. Is it a position time graph or is it a velocity time graph? Because we will interpret it very differently. This is a position time graph. So we start out at a position of zero. We're moving forward all the way to five meters. Then we are moving backwards, aren't we? All the way back to position zero. Then we're moving backwards and then right here we're neither moving forward nor backwards because we are changing our direction okay and you can see now we're moving backwards all the way to zero okay but you can see at this instantaneous point you might say oh, I'm not moving here I'm not moving here no you're moving forward here why are you moving forward is you can see how we're continuing to go forward. We're going from the negative position to a positive position. We're moving forward. And now, at this point in time, we're moving backwards because we went from five meters and we're continuing to move backwards. Okay, so we got backwards neither, forward, backward on this type of graph. You can see this graph, graph, this graph is a velocity time graph, okay? And so we need to think, change your mind into talking about velocity. So we're going negative four meters per second, okay? This is really going very fast, but in the negative direction, okay? And you can see he's slowing down all the way to zero meters per second, zero meters per second. Now the sp we're speeding up and now we're going positive two meters per second, which means we must be moving forward, aren't we? Now we go all the way, we're going the fastest, our speed is positive four meters per second in the positive direction, we're moving forward, and we come back to a velocity of zero, and when we're going a velocity of zero, we are standing still, which means we're neither going forwards nor backwards if we're standing still at a velocity of zero. Now we start moving in the negative direction because now we're moving backwards, which means right here we're moving backwards. We're moving negative four meters per second. We're going four meters per second in the negative direction. We're moving backwards. And still right here, we're going negative one meters per second. We're going one meter per second in the negative direction, which means we're still moving backwards. So we have forwards, neither, backwards, and backwards here. Okay. I think this is one last example here. We have a particle moving in a x axis at this position function. It's a cubic function right here. And we want to know the, the particle's velocity at time equals two. So how do I find the velocity with respect to time? I'm going to take the derivative of the position with respect to time, which means I have three t squared minus eight t plus three. I want to find the velocity at exactly at this instantaneous point of two, which means three times two squared minus eight times two plus three. And when I do all of this, I end up getting, uh, I believe, negative one meter per second, okay? Um, you can see uh, three times four is 12. We have 12 minus 16 plus three, and that's negative one meter per second. So the next thing is, uh, what about the acceleration? Acceleration as a function of time is the change of the velocity with respect to time. The change of the velocity with respect to time. So I'm going to take this velocity function I found and take the derivative. I have 6t minus 8. And I want to know at exactly 3 seconds. So 6 times 3 minus 8. So we have 18 minus 8, which is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, those units on that. So the acceleration is positive here at positive three. So let's take a look at 
what's happening here is it says, what is the direction of the particle's motion at negative two? And so we said that a particle is moving along the x-axis, so you can see right is going to be positive, left is going to be negative. We're moving negative one meter per second, which means we must be moving to the left. We must be moving to the left uh, for this, this answer here. And then what do I know about the particle's speed? The particle speed, it's positive 10 meters per second squared, okay, which means the velocity is changing in a positive way. The velocity is changing in a positive way. Now, I want to check out the velocity at this three seconds. And so I have three times three squared minus eight times three plus three. I can go back to this velocity function right here. So I have three times nine, that's 27 minus eight times three, that is 24 plus three. And so you can see how here I'm positive six meters per second. So the velocity is positive. The acceleration is positive, which means the speed must be increasing here because those are both matching that positive and that positive, okay? So this is a lot of physics in straight line motion. It's not that hard. We're just taking derivatives. Going from position to velocity to acceleration is uh, derivative, derivative, derivative.